Alright, hola amigos. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, some of the comments that I've been getting. Uh, been, uh, there's a lot of stuff on the table here. So I'm not going to cover everything. Um, I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. We'll see how that turns out. But um, I want to make some interesting notes here that might help. So let me skim through a little bit of this. Uh, Babis Babinos. Uh, he says something about uh, humans follow angels. Humans followed a fallen angel from the beginning in the Garden of Eden. Alright, so I want to touch on that a little bit here. Uh, the world sons of God is also referred to something spiritual prophets angels no it's never ever not even one single time in the entire Bible are the sons of God referred to as angels it's never done in fact the Bible says that God has never called an angel his son um, I, I don't know if I've seen uh, you know this Goliath's armor and spear might be something interesting uh, to look up later okay why don't I look up the Hebrew word of you know whatever doesn't matter the reason is because the English is superior to the Hebrew uh, and this this there's all sorts of problems here when you're going to a language that you don't even speak yourself so let's go I mean this is important right because if you don't believe the Bible you hold in your hands you're never gonna see it because there's never gonna be a Bible the Word of God that you hold in your hands it's pretty simple right now um, I know people make a big deal out of, you know, oh, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. Well, let's go to Genesis 2, verse 23. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. When Adam spoke those words, he did not speak those in Hebrew. So why are you making a big deal out of a language that is dead? Okay, so in the time that Noah, or I'm sorry, in the time of Adam when he spoke those words, the whole earth, well, he, he had, the whole earth was of one language all the way from Adam, the creation of Adam, all the way until after the flood, and the population had built back up again and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech and then God confounded the language after that nobody could ever understand what that original language was so the Hebrew clearly is not the original language and what Adam spoke there in Genesis 2 is a translation of what he said and everything is a translation and the Word of God transcends through all languages for all time forever and ever so let's make this clear here um, for one example here Paul tells us whether there be tongues they shall cease now there are numerous verses to uh, support this to uh, you should have been able to figure this out by reading the Bible anyways. But for with stammering lips and another, an, and another tongue will we speak to this people. We get this in Isaiah 28 verse 11. In the law it is written. So we've got a parallel verse here. With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people and yet for all that will they not hear me saith the Lord 
the fact that the word of God transcends all languages for all time, forever and ever, people still don't get it. They still want to point back to dead languages that dead languages that they don't speak themselves. You don't know what the Hebrew says. You're relying on men to tell you what God says. Now think about that. And you think of that, and then you think of the Strong's Concordance, and then you read Genesis 3. Remember? The serpent said to the woman, Yea, has God said? Question mark. Getting Eve to doubt the Word of God. That's what the, the Strong's Concordance does. I call it the Serpent's Concordance. And that's what people are doing when they point back to the Hebrew or the Greek. They're saying, eh? That does your Bible say? I got another book here that says something else. And, I mean, really. You're falling into the same seductive trap that the serpent beguiled Eve with. Getting Eve to doubt the word of God. Okay. And the fact of the matter, if you wipe away all the manure, you realize, hey, do you believe the Bible that you hold in your hands? Because if you don't, then you don't trust God. Now, you don't believe God, there's no foundation, no gold standard for you to re rely upon. You're just making up whatever you want. You become the final authority. That's a dangerous place to be, and of course, why would you put yourself in that position? Now think about this. Even today, when Moses is read, there's a veil upon the hearts of them that don't believe. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Alright, so believing what you're reading is key to understanding it's the it's the only key without faith you cannot understand what Moses is talking about what Jesus is talking about the Bible as a whole you will not be able to understand any of it without faith key to understanding is faith it's always been about faith it's always been about faith since the creation of the world it's always been about faith 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 it's always been about faith all right so it's very important very important so why would you point to a Hebrew unless you don't believe the Bible you hold in your hands yeah, there's no other reason so in he in uh, Genesis 6 <laughs> and this is this is amazing another amazing example here I wish I could do two searches at once maybe someday I can fix this but notice this how every single you know all nine or seven different times in nine verses the word man is used and seven times and you know how do I say this? Because we've got to go down here. That's not it. That's not it. One, two, three, four, five times in the first four verse. Uh, am I getting that right? i got to go back here. One, two, three, four, five, six. <coughs> Excuse me. Six times in nine verses. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. I was looking at that number there. My, my bad. And then, of course five mentions here of the word men so think about this man it came to pass when men who's it talking about angels or men it's talking about men when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons this is a direct reference to what we read in the first verse men men are sons all right, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all 
which they chose. So when it talks about men, it's talking about sons of God. When it's talking about daughters, it's talking about daughters of men. And of course, daughters of, of men just simply means unmarried women. All right, so the daughter belongs to the father until the father gives her in marriage to another man. And notice what it says here. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with, is it man or angels? It's man, man, it's man, man. All right. And there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God, remember what we read up here, sons of God? You're talking about men? All right. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men. All right, so the mighty men were once children that came from daughters of men and sons of God, which goes all the way back to the setting of where it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. And we could trace that back even further to the very first man, Adam, which was the Son of God. Luke 3, verse 38, draws out a genealogy that goes all the way back to Adam, which was the Son of God. So everybody born of Adam was the Son of God, and the separation between the sons of God and the sons of the wicked one did not occur until God made his promises with Abraham and that he should make Abraham uh, and his seed the promises of eternal life. Okay, So that's when the separation began and then there was the children of Israel which was the children of God and outside of the children of Israel were the nations deceived all right okay so the, this word Nephilim is just it's a gateway drug to UFO aliens I mean if you're gonna shoot up you might as well shoot up with the really good stuff Right? I mean, you might as well go all out and just get higher in a kite and just say, Hey, Jesus Christ is a UFO alien. You know, why are you stopping halfway? You know, stick that needle all the way in. Alright, and then uh, perhaps you'll realize, you know, if this ain't the right kind of drug for me. Really. Yeah, I can't go along with this stuff because there are no UFO aliens period and this idea of uh, Nephilim UFO aliens whatever you want to call them man you want to try to say no they're not UFO aliens they're half angel half men or something I, I don't know where, where are they at now uh, really were they out there at sea humping fish or something I mean really what's going on here because this is all fairy tale stuff right you realize that no you actually be are that gullible you're gonna believe that there are beings in outer space coming down and having sex with what your wife your sister, your mother, your daughter. You know, what are you imagining, man? Are you hoping that someday you'll become one of them? I, I don't get it. What's this fascination and obsession with sex and beings from outer space coming down and having sex? What is this obsession? It's odd. Very, very odd. It's fairy tale stuff, is what it is. It's Peter Pan stuff. All right, this is silly nonsense. Okay, you believe? 
How do you conclude that if you believe in Nephilim, offspring of angels and humans, uh, you also believe that the Bible is wrong? Because the Bible doesn't say this. <laughs> and that's that's simple as it gets, because the Bible doesn't say that anywhere at all. doesn't even hint at the possibility. In fact, it says the exact opposite. Why don't I trust the Bible? That's a great question. I don't know why you don't. Why don't you trust God? You believe that God can resurrect you from the dead. But God can't give you a perfect Bible that you can hold in your hands and trust and know that these are the words directly from God in my language to me and for me. I mean, really. He can... He can create heaven and earth but he can't give you a perfect Bible second Timothy 316 all scripture is given by inspiration of God the Word of God came in old time not by the will of men can't remember oh no oh no what's that uh oh I forgot the Bible for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man so there's your there there goes your theory that you can't trust the Bible because it was written by men all right that, that right there that one verse alone utterly destroys this idea that you can't trust the Bible that you hold in your hands. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And of course, I mean, we, I could do this all day. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. Right, so it's critically important that you trust God. Uh, yes, the men of Sodom and Gomorrah were perverse because they were because they went after strange flesh. It says in like manner with angels. No, it doesn't say that. Now there was somebody here. Hold on a second. I thought I read. Okay. In like manner, we let's here. Well, right there it is. Fear the Lord. Okay. And then I think this is your comment. Yep. All right. So I want to go back here. Are you the same person as Fear the Lord? Or are you guys getting your teaching? from the same person. This is incredible. Okay, bro, you have got to be joking. Verse 7 is comparing the sins of the angels that their habitation to the sins Oh, I'm sorry. It's comparing the sins of the angels that left their habitation to the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah in like manner. Meaning in comparison. Alright, so let me make sure I got this right. Verse 7 is comparing the sins of the angels that left their habitation to the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. It, no, it's not. In like manner. You quote, in like manner. Meaning in comparison. No. You've got that absolutely incorrect. Alright, and if you're going to get that wrong, everything that you say has to be dismissed. You have to start over from scratch. All right, I'll show you. Now let me see what Bab is Babonus. Babinos. I'm sorry. Bab is Babinos. Let's see what he says here. It says in like manner with angels. No, it doesn't. You, you're talking about Jude. There can be no doubt about it. I was talking about Jude. You're echoing. 
It says in like manner with angels. And it doesn't say that at all. All right. Let's see here. Let's go. Let's go there. Now there was a couple other things I wanted to show you here. I might have forgotten what they are, but maybe when I get to them, I'll remember. All right. So, you know, I think it's really important to understand the whole, whole book of Jude. You know, and I'd like to go point to, uh, you know, Second Peter 2 and draw the comparisons to help better understand um, if I'm remembering this correctly. For if God not, if for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person. Okay. So we see a similarity here. Um, let's go up here. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, and uh, he has reserved an everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah. All right, so I think you know, I really do think it's important to understand the context of what Jude is saying here, even what Peter is saying here. All right, because he's these guys are warning us of the exact thing that you're trying to preach, and you don't even know it. It's really quite remarkable to see this. It's like a phenomenon, right? For they, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantingness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. All right, I mean, you take a look I just want to go over Jude, okay? Jude being the brother of Jesus, the brother of James. All right, make no mistake about that. They shared the same mother, along with James. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you and encourage you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. And that's exactly what this angel sex you know half breed angel man angel fish whatever angel dog I mean this is disgusting it's a disgusting damnable heresy this is a doctrine of devils you know there's so much I wanted to talk about and I'm gonna I'm just I'm going on about this stuff but Make no mistake about it. He's, you know, uh, along with Peter, Jude is warning us of these guys walking after their own lust. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. This whole thing about angels having sex with women all, all of you guys I mean this sincerely all of you guys every single one of you you're mocking God with this lustful sex filled doctrine that is not supported by the Bible in any sort of way whatsoever alright you think of evolution and maybe this will be simpler for you to see when you think of evolution 
and what they teach little children that they were made in the image of a monkey and then the same little child open up the Bible the very first book uh, fir- very first book the very first chapter and he or she reads and God said let us make man in our image therefore if both the Bible is true and the school teacher is true then God must be a monkey <clears throat> alright there's no way to get around it I mean that's mock, they're mocking God when they teach children that they evolved from a monkey and so also when you're teaching this idea that sons of God are fallen angels y'all are mocking God and it's disgusting it really is beloved now are we the sons of God Jesus is the son of God Adam was a son of God at no time has God ever called an angel his son at no time All right. it never ever occurs in the Bible anywhere at all okay so in Jude you know, let's go back to what I was going to point out to you now, again, I mean, this is really important stuff to understand what Jude is talking about, what, you know, Peter's talking about. I will put therefore, I'm sorry, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward, destroyed them that believed not you know that you know what that's referring to right all right just as Moses led his people out of the wickedness of Egypt so also will our Lord Jesus Christ lead us out of this wicked world all right into a world of everlasting life and the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day All right, this is not it's not clear on what exactly this is referring to or what this is pointing to I mean you could go you think about when is the first time that the angels departed and you have to go all the way back to Adam and Eve when they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil at that moment the spirits that were set to be good had to have split I, you know we could get into all that but it's really is it necessary uh, maybe some other point but that's what I have to believe is that in the beginning and we go to Revelation 12 and it draw it paints us a picture very similar where the the dragon Satan the devil I thought right there swiped his tail and uh, and you know the woman travailed the woman being symbolic for Eve or you could go vice versa and say an Eve is a foreshadowing of or maybe even a, a physical uh, comparison to the spiritual Eve being um, the mother of us all and then of course we read in Genesis 3 verse 15 
Yeah. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Think about that. Alright, so we see a similarity here in Jude and, and then also in Revelation 12 where um, there's a war that takes place because uh, the devil uh, makes war um, against uh, the child which is the Son of God which is Jesus. Okay. And so, think about this. Okay, the dragon fought it and his angels. The angels were no angels at all, right? They weren't sons of God, for sure. I mean, come on. It wasn't Adam fighting against Eve. And we get all kinds of nonsensical, really. Which should show how ridiculous this idea is that uh, sons of God are, you know, half, you know, half uh, angel, half human, whatever. But I want to make a point here. So it says angels. Okay, so also, uh, it's these are not the angel angels of God. Angels are spirits. Okay, number one, angels are spirits. The Bible is crystal clear here. Who makes his angel spirit so angels are they're what they're spirits they're not beings they're never mentioned as beings anywhere at all in the Bible all right so mate that's crystal clear now we notice here that there are numerous mentions of the word devils Devils also are spirits. Devils are not beings. I mean, if you want to take your crackpot theory all the way, then you got, you know what? You got angels living on Venus, and you got devils living on Mars. I mean, you got all kinds of, you got the grays, and you got the blues, and you got, you know, what's going on in your mind? Oh, why? How come if the angels came down and had sex, why didn't the devils come down and have sex? Because they're spirits also. And you got a crackpot uh, doctrine here that does not hold up to the truth at all. And to me, it's just people mocking God. Uh, mocking the sons of God, which we are, we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are sons of God. And here you are, yelling and screaming, hey, the sons of God are half aliens. UFO aliens, you guys are a bunch of, yeah, uh, you know, it's just so ridiculous. Alright, so let's get back to Jude, in like manner, okay. Um, no, let's go, oh, verse 7, okay. So this is where this in like manner is in question right here. I and mean, this is incredible, guys, really. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire how in the world you apply this in like manner to angels having sex is way beyond me because in like manner is clearly talking about the cities I mean it is what is so complicated about this you so desperately don't want to believe what's being written that you're going to totally ignore what's written and just 
pick this to mean that and that to mean this and just to hell with what it actually says you're just gonna make it make it up anyway and see so that's why I say that's very why you know, this is why it's so important to believe the Bible that you hold in your hands okay let's go over this again even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication so there was Sodom there was Gomorrah and there were cities round about them smaller but similar and in like manner they did as the bigger cities of Sodom and Gomorrah did and they were all destroyed they were all destroyed with fire and brimstone not just Sodom not just Gomorrah not just Sodom and Gomorrah but the cities also they were all wicked they were all a bunch of perverts and they were all destroyed alright so even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner the cities about them in like manner to Sodom and Gomorrah <laughs> I mean come on man you're not being honest here when you're saying that this is somehow talking about angels having sex that's not even an honest statement Now I agree with you, the the blood of Jesus What do you say? What do you say? But but with the blood of Jesus that runs through us, we have nothing to fear. Okay. This you mean the spirit of God that is in us, we have nothing to fear. Right? After the flood those angels were chained in darkness, so alright, so you're not getting you're not getting that after the flood uh, that's not uh, that's not said anywhere in, at all in the Bible is it am I mistaken about that <clears throat> you'll correct me if I'm wrong See, and this is why I like when people uh, present different views that I don't agree with. It makes me examine my own view. So let's read this here again. Let me read this. I'm just thinking out loud here. Can we apply this to... Um, you know what our friend says here that uh, the angels were chained up after the flood right, so let me do it this way uh, and the serpent cast out of his mouth the water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So nowhere at all can we use that to justify this idea that it was after the flood that the, that the devil's angels were chained up. Okay. Yeah, we yeah, we used that. In I don't know. I don't even know if you're using the Bible, man. I mean, that's the thing. You pointing to Hebrew? You're not pointing to the Bible. You're pointing to a language. You realize that, right? Hebrew is not the Bible. It's a dead language. It would be smarter of you to try to show us why the Book of Enoch is not canon. Well, I mean, it's kind of like you know showing you the Book of Scooby Doo is not canon. I mean, really, do I have to do that? It's not in the Bible. The book of Scooby-Doo has not in, ever been in the Bible. Neither has the book of Enoch. 
I mean, the, the book of Enoch has obvious problems and I don't know anybody that is even remotely serious about this nobody serious would ever claim that the book of Enoch <coughs> should be in the Bible all right uh, you got obvious problems man obvious problems I think there was another commenter that pointed out the obvious that yeah, there were not 400 mile tall men or whatever the book of Enoch says and of course uh, you know the book of Enoch says that uh, something about uh, their angel Faniel I think it is I don't know the salvation is by him I mean there's all kinds of problems with the book of Enoch and it's completely contrary to what the Bible says I mean, why would you fall for that nonsense really didn't you read the Bible didn't you see all the warnings that the Bible gives us uh, specifically Jesus weren't you paying attention didn't you consider what Jesus had to say when he's asked <coughs> what shall be the son of thy coming of the end of the world and he says take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying that I Jesus am the Christ and shall deceive many and false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many and there shall arise false Christ false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if were possible they shall deceive the very elect I mean we're being warned over and over All right. evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived okay so let's do this here I don't want to leave anything out here there's a lot on the table so I want to encourage you to you know keep challenging me on this stuff there was a comment here uh, somewhere I thought that uh, you know something to the fact that uh, that uh, you know you think oh you guys of course skipped my genealogy nation argument I wonder why uh, there's just so much on the table man I'm not <coughs> skipping nothing but I you know I just want to if you don't get one single point man what's the point of going over every single point first of all you know that that one point right here man if you can't be honest with yourself right there and, and admit this phrase in like manner is in reference to Sodom and Gomorrah and it's talking about the cities around about them right, if you're not honest about that then I, I can't help you and nobody can help you until you start being honest with yourself Man, at the end of the day isn't that what it's all about just being honest with yourself and realizing and admitting to yourself that man you know I made a mistake and isn't that really even what leads us to being born of the Spirit of God is realizing before God that man I made a mistake you know and, um, and quite frankly you know, for me, it wasn't one mistake, it was a gazillion mistakes. And there was no doubt in my mind that I can't do it on my own. You know what I mean? I need a Savior. And there's Jesus the whole time. You know, it's amazing. All, you know, for 30 years of my life, I was 
trying to ignore the obvious, but I couldn't ignore it any longer. All right, so you have to, it's the, that's important, you know, to throw away your pride and put the truth at the forefront. Because what's more important than the truth? Really. There's nothing more important in this world than the, than the truth. So, you have to be honest with yourself. And you have to re-examine this phrase in Jude, verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner. Speaking about in like manner that Sodom and Gomorrah was. The cities about them. No reference at all. Uh, you uh, you know, I, I gotta be honest with you, buddy. You're just telling a flat out lie. Uh, you're just straight, straight up lying. Uh, maybe you thought nobody would check you up on that. I mean, is that your intent to deceive people? Is that really what's in your heart? To hell with the truth. Let's see if I can deceive these people. And is that really what you're about? Or are you really sincere and looking for the truth? Are you trying to find the truth just like everybody else? Alright. There are, because there are people that don't care about the truth. And that's obvious. There are people that do not care about the truth at all, and there's a whole bunch of them, and they clearly outnumber those of us that are born of the Spirit of God. <clears throat> Alright, so, yeah, I want to wrap this up. And I also want to finish all these. I mean, this could turn into a two-hour thing here. I mean, you got some really interesting stuff about giants and Soko, Sokotra Island and Solomon Island. Man, this is interesting stuff here. All right, and, they're, they're, and the Smithsonian, why would they hide bones of giants? Because, uh, to me, it'd be obvious if that's even true. And we don't know that that's true. But I, I do suspect that they are hiding stuff that supports the Bible. I believe that. Um, I believe, I really do, I think that's happening. I, I have no proof at all, at all of it. It's just strange that the history that is presented to us is absolutely contrary to the Word of God. So, you know, I appreciate these. Maybe I'll do another video, you know, if everybody just doesn't say anything or I get bored or something and talk about some of these other comments, man, because this is all interesting stuff. But I did want to show a couple things and I don't even know what it was. I, you know, I think the other day somebody said something about something. Um... It's something about 10 out of 10 people think, you know, that sons of God are angels or something to that effect. Uh, and I just wanted to show one example, but that's not true. I mean, it, maybe if you averaged out 9.9 .9 people, which would round up to 10 out of 10, I, I, I would agree with that. But there are not it's not like I'm the only one that is able to see the truth there are several other people out there right but, I mean we are far and away in the mon minority I get it but that's the way it's supposed to be that's the way it's supposed to be the closer we get to the very end right it, just as Jesus he asked a very interesting question nevertheless All right, talking about um, God having vengeance on them. Uh, here, let's maybe I ought to do that this way. <coughs> and the Lord said, uh, "Here, what the unjust." Okay, so he's talking about this up here. 
And God shall not, I'm sorry, in, I'm sorry, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on earth? I mean, isn't that interesting? All right there, that tells you that there's going to be very, few people that are saved, that are born of the Spirit of God on the day that Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. You think about the days of Noah. You know, I, I think there was over 25 billion people. I think there was a lot of people on earth when the floods came. Yet, of all the people that were on earth, only eight of them were saved. Think about that. Very very few people were saved when the end of the world came. You think about Sodom and Gomorrah. We've been talking about that, right? And was it Abraham pleaded or bargained with God? If ten be, what was that? Uh, ten be righteous. <clears throat> it, is that? That's not it, is it? If there be ten, I thought it was righteous. If there be ten, we spare him for ten's sake. Uh, well, let's, let's do it this way. Because it started out, what did it start out? A hundred or fifty or something like that? Per venture, there'd be fifty righteous within the city. Now, there wasn't fifty righteous, was there? <laughs> and the more he thought about it, the more the more he realized, well, wait a second, this place is filthy, it's nasty, it's disgusting, people are wicked. So the bargaining went all the way down to ten. If there are ten, I will, God said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. If there are ten righteous, I won't destroy it. Well, what happened? God destroyed it. Because there wasn't even ten people in two huge cities and the cities around about them in that whole area. And millions and millions of people and there wasn't even ten oops there wasn't even ten righteous okay right. now let's fast forward to when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven you know will there be ten people on earth that are born of the Spirit of God. Right? I mean, you think about this. In Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Um, I believe, uh, do they all have a, it's just Mark and Matthew, okay. Except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sakes, whom he has chosen, he has shortened the days. So the day, if God allowed things to continue, there wouldn't be anybody at all saved. So this tells you right here again that there ain't going to be very many people saved at all. And what kind of world are we living in right now when people don't even care about the Bible they hold in their hands, they continuously... Men that, men that appear to be righteous, men that appear to be God-fearing, men that appear to be Bible believers, pointing to other sources outside of the Bible that they hold in their hands. It's incredible. And there's really no reason at all to get these matters wrong. There isn't. You have the spirit of truth in you. God has promised to give you the truth if you ask for it. So what's the hubbub? You, you want to desperately believe that you're the UFO aliens? Having sex with people? Or why? Why is that so important to you? You desperately want to believe what you see from Hollywood movies like The Left Behind? You want to believe CNN and Fox News? You want to believe that people are good? People aren't good. There's liars all around us. And those liars, through the spirit of the Antichrist, are at constant war against those of us that are born of the Spirit of God. 
And so they're going after our children. They're on TV. They're in movies. They're everywhere. We're surrounded by them. Constantly. Daily. Every single day. We are in a war whether we participate in it or not. We're in a war. And we're getting hammered. We're getting hammered. So there was something else I wanted to... Did I even read this? Um, I'm not sure. It is disgusting that some so-called Christian commentaries read like an exegesis. Oh, goodness. You know, here, we, here I'm talking about people. Uh, I'm saying, hey, you guys don't even know Hebrew. Well, I barely even know English. But this is the only language I know. And you're going to tell me I have to go learn another language? Give me a couple of hundred years to first learn this English, okay? Then I'll start working on whatever goofy language you got set up for me, all right? Critical explanation, or let me... Exegesis. Exegesis. All right. So critical explanation or interpretation of text, especially of Scripture. Okay. It, it is disgusting that some so-called commentaries read like an exegesis on the apocryphal... Book of Enoch. Uh, uh, yeah, so I don't. Know. Rather than a discussion on the sacred New Testament, yeah. So they're putting the Book of Enoch and talking about that rather than what the New Testament actually says. It's incredible. That's the kind of wickedness that of the world that we're living in right now. Wild speculative tales about angels having intercourse with women. I mean, it's ludicrous, man. It's nonsense. It's disgusting. And then here, of course, uh, I don't know who these guys are. Barnes. Um, some this other guy here makes an interesting point here. I want to share. Uh, he says some of the later Jews suppose that they relinquished heaven out of love for the daughters of men. Talking about angels, okay. So the whole thing's disgusting, but what's interesting here is he's alluding to the fact that these are Jewish fables. All right, and what do we read in Titus 1.14? Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Jewish fairy tales, and that's what this is. This idea of angels having sex with um, you know, turtles or fish or whatever, you know, and women. I mean, this this is all fairy still. This is Peter Pan stuff, man. But And you fell for it. Now, what can I say to convince you? I mean, it's easier to lie to somebody than it is to convince them that they've been lied to. Isn't it? Alright. Now, we're, we're warned of these guys over and over, aren't we? Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. You know who that is, don't you? You know who that's talking about, right? And... I don't know what, oops. It, you know, and we get um, I mean, numerous examples over and over. Oh, let me do it this way. Yeah, you know who, who this is talking about, right? They claim to be the seed of Abraham, but they're not the seed of Abraham. Right? You know who that's talking about, right? In John 8, ye are of your father, the devil. Right? In Revelation 3, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and to worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. First Thessalonians 2, verse 15, speaking about you know who who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have per persecuted us, and they please not God, 
and are contrary to all men. So here we got this fable of angel sex, man, mermaids, you know, uh, Nephilim, superhuman, you know, superheroes, you know, Batman, Robin, all that stuff. I mean, you're believing this. You're, you're falling for it, man. They got you. No, you got tricked. And what can I say to you, buddy? Really? How can I convince you that you fell for their tricks? I can't. You have to figure it out. You have to accept it on your own. You have to let go of your pride, man. And trust God. You, you know, just... If you just read Genesis 6, be honest. There's no mention of angels at all in Genesis 6. And the context is quite clear. I mean, it's not just one little dilly-dally. Not one little mention. Not one, you know, one little uh, blurb that could be vague, taken a number of different ways. I mean, this is obvious who it's talking about and there, there is just absolutely no question whatsoever who this is talking about in Genesis 6 All right, and it's not talking about angels man it's talking about man man alright so that's enough I appreciate these comments now again I want to make myself clear I, I really want to encourage people to share different views and I'll try to be nice if I'm not nice let me you know, hammer me on that you know call me a jerk and tell me to lighten up and and correct me on my manners okay because I do have bad manners I want to have good manners I want to be nice to folks but I want to be stern and I want to be forceful and I want to to preach the truth. I want to know the truth. And when you're telling me that there are UFO aliens or whatever you want to call them, if you want to call them Nephilim, that's fine. I call them UFO aliens. Sometimes I call them little green men. It's the same thing. It's imaginary. It's a figment of your imagination. They don't exist. It's all fairy tale stuff. It has nothing to do with the truth at all. And it's not supported with scripture in any way whatsoever. Alright, but I want to encourage if that's what you believe, that if that's what you think, even if you don't believe it, and you just want to you just want to present this view and say, Alright, what do you say about this? And then what about that? You go ahead and present it that way, you know. And let's talk about it. Because these things are important and they do help both of us. They should help both of us to be sharper and to be clear on exactly what we do believe. All right? it'll, it'll help us to read the Bible more. It'll help us to put more faith into the Word of God. And to trust the Bible that we hold in our hands. These are all good things. Because uh, you know we're all growing. And, and we're all at different levels. Right? And uh, you know somebody pointed out to me the other day that I need to take a... Um, a more graceful approach to uh, these particular topics is sometimes I'm a little bit, you know, uh, harsh, I guess. A little bit, I'm a little bit rough, man, you know. And I, I agree. I absolutely agree. Sometimes I, a little bit too rough. But, you know, I'll try to be better. Just like you're trying to be better. We're all trying to be better. That's just life. Right? And if I need to apologize, I'll apologize for sure. But at the end of the day, we're after the truth, aren't we? I and mean, what's more important than the truth? So let's, let's get to the truth. Let's uh, continue this conversation. Have a good night. And uh, hopefully continue this tomorrow.